Welcome everyone. Adam the Woo here as the recording of this Thursday, April 21st, 2022. I will be talking about a subject that is a little, not exactly the happiest subject matter, a little sad, a little tragic, about Celebration of Florida. Something that is brought up quite a bit when I talk about how the town is. It is built by the Disney Corporation. Opened in 1994, that's when they first did the ribbon cutting and all that, as the perfect town. And it is amazing to live here. It is the quintessential, almost like Truman Show, meets Mayberry, meets Pleasantville, almost like a, a movie backlot in a lot of ways because it was built by a theme park corporation even though in 2004, I believe it was, Disney pulled away the reins from that, but they are still adhering to a lot of the perfection status and homeowners association. I just rent, I am not a homeowner, so I don't have to, to deal with a lot of the, the stress of that. I've heard it's if you own a home here, you really have to follow a lot of guidelines with me renting, not quite as stressful. I digress on that. There is an element, like any city or town, of things that are not happy, things that go wrong, and I don't want to cover that. Not sure how I'm going to approach it, but I do want to go to the locations on where some of these events took place, not only show where they happened, but also pay my respects to those who have passed on from them and just bring them to the attention of everyone out there just to let the viewers know, anyone that's watching this know, that, that everywhere, no matter what, I would imagine, you know, even in Mayberry, Andy Griffith, there were some things that probably, you know, it's fictional, but would not have made it to the TV show. There were problems there too. This isn't Mayberry, but it's an analogy that could have gone a little bit better. I'm inviting you to join me. Shall you? I should also note that it was about 15 years of the town being in existence before any major incidents took place. And there were a few altercations here and there, but nothing really heavily newsworthy until about 2010 when two events took place here within the same week and really got people who were living here at that time wondering what the heck is going on and a little worried that someone was around with not the best intentions that could not be caught. Ended up not being true, but there was a worrisome vibe to this area back in 2010 with two things dramatically happening in one week. And then the other one is an event that took place a few, a couple years ago, two or three years ago, that just went through the court system you know, a week or so ago and it kind of got brought back up in the news. So a lot of people have been asking about that and bringing it back up is now kind of relevant again. So I just kind of want to touch on that as well and talk about that. Right here on the corner of Water Street and Celebration Ave, kind of walk along here. Now I've never been to these spots before, even though they are in the general neighborhood. So I don't precisely know just going off of some photos and whatnot. And notice from this photo from 2010, the tape going across there, the yellow tape, and the Idlewild is the name of, of this place. The Glenhaven and Idlewild are both this, what this sign say. Which is right here through this gate. And there's a parking lot around the back too. You can just walk in here. And looks like this is the spot here, the photo matches up, right over here in this far corner, the far, far end one next to the palm trees there, with the building in the background. I can't really tell if these are still apartments or if they're businesses now. Doesn't really, doesn't really look like residence anymore. It's possible. You have the tape right around this tree. Looking at it right there. 
and this was in 2010, the same week, the very first time that anything happened here in town that was like this. His name was Matteo Giovondito. He was 58 years old, and he was a teacher. And a homeless man took an axe and lashed out at him. And Matteo perished because of that, but he lived right over here in this little courtyard. This is really close to Market Street, very, very close to what you would consider like Main Street USA here in Celebration. He lived alone with his little dog, a Chihuahua. It's a pretty complicated story. I'm not gonna go into the details, but there's more to it than that, but you get the idea. But this is where it was right here in this little courtyard. As stated, these aren't exactly the kind of subjects I'd normally cover. I have kind of gone down the rabbit hole and a lot of true crime stuff and whatnot before, but it's been a while. But I figure since I live here, and people do ask, I kind of want to see these places with my own eye and figured I would document it as well. Mr. Gio, Giovan. Dito. G I O V A N D I T T O. 58. Lived right over there in that corner. And eerily close to where I purchased this coffee at the Cornerstone Cafe, which is just, just walking out of the courtyard there. Market Street, the post office, right over there, Cornerstone Cafe, where I got this caffeinated beverage. Now, I have always been under the impression that if you rent a place or you buy a place, the landlord or the realtor must tell you of any kind of a darker past that the place has. So I would imagine whoever lives at any of the places now must be informed of that. You can't go into, you can't go into a contract, either leasing or renting or buying, without giving you that history. I'm gonna get in my car now and drive to a couple of the other spots. I could walk to them, but it's a pretty long walk. I guess I could take my scooter or could ride my bike, but I'll get my car and just kind of drive around, show some other stuff as well. I always like this little canal area. It reminds me of Venice Beach, or not Venice Beach, but Venice, just beside the beach in California with the bridges. I've mentioned that before, but it always reminds me every time I see it. I think, Nightmare on Elm Street? Johnny Depp standing up there eating a sandwich. And to give a little correlation of that spot I just showed here along this canal on Water Street, right over there is where I first went through. So it's just kind of tucked away in that courtyard over there. The first ever tragedy here in Celebration happened, 2010. And I would imagine when Michael Eisner, you know, first did the ribbon cutting, back in 1994. Probably did not want any events like that transpiring and being on the name of the town. In fact, Disney still had their hand in it because around that time, because until 2004, Disney still had their hand in celebration. So I would imagine that was also, you know, something you just don't want to be the town to be known for. It was down here near this cul-de-sac, this very beautiful neighborhood. Oh, there's a little dog over there, taking a little nap. Hello, dog. Actually, I think that dog might be coming over to talk to me. But it was right over here. 52-year-old Craig, I'll try to pronounce his name correctly. Fushi, F-O-U-S-H-E-E, -E, 52 years old, for 14 hours was held up in this home. The officer's out front. He was having some problems, did not mean any harm, but ended up causing some harm to himself. But it, 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 he did not do anything to anyone else. He was just having some problems in life, did not, wasn't able to handle them. And that was the same week as the other one I showed. So I just wanted to miss, mention Craig Fushi who was here, he was an airline pilot or worked for the airlines, from what I was reading. 
And after reading a little more, I guess he did fire at the officers, but no one was injured. And after that 14 hour ordeal, they ended up going in the house and realized that he had passed on. This is all in what some refer to as the bubble, the nickname for celebration, the bubble, because everything is enclosed in here. I do feel like I need to get one of these shirts. Interesting fact, over here across the road is Celebrations Wisteria Lane. Just like the Desperate Housewives. Right across from where the town hall is. That's another, I've mentioned a lot of TVs, movies, things like that that this area reminds me of. That's another one that you could put into that equation. You just turn it on to Lake Evelyn and right up here is Wisteria Lane and Wisteria Court. With the birds chirping. I don't know why I never noticed this till now, but right along this road, along the fence line, is all this ivy. It's beautiful. It stretches all the way down there. I've ridden my bike, I took my scooter through here a few times, but never paid much attention to how it's just the foliage is growing right here on the side of the wall. Right across from the town hall, which is right there. About 10 years after the ones I've already shown, in January of 2020, you know, just a couple years ago, a little over two years ago. In this neighborhood, which I have never been to this section of Celebration. Celebration is very expansive. The deputies arrived here to find a very sad, somber scene. Again, I'm not going to go into the details of it. Plenty of info about that online for those who want to want to look it up. If not, I completely understand. But this neighborhood, just looking at this, you would think perfection. You would think nothing bad would happen here. The reality is something very bad did happen here. And there are some scene photos as well from this angle, from the investigation. It's so right here in this area where Megan Tot, T O D T, is how you spell their last name, Todd or Tot. She was the mother. Her son Alec, son Tyler. And youngest child, Zoe, perished, as well as the family dog named Breezy. Now, very recently, within the last week or so, the husband, the father, just got his sentence of life in prison, multiple life sentences. the actions of one man could take away take away something beautiful I always kind of battle with you know not really pushing the envelope so much but really covering certain subject matters with 
attempted amount of respect and not trying to do something that's too new, too current. Granted, the court case just took place even though the event happened a couple years ago and some of the other ones happened well over a decade ago. I usually don't really focus on something that it just now happened. And even something like this, I get like an uneasy feeling knowing how to approach it. Don't want to... I don't know, it's, 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 it's tough to cover, but I am interested in history and it really did happen. It's something that really probably shouldn't be swept under the rug. It really, especially in, a, in an area that I reside. This is my, my hometown now, if you will, my homestead. Not planning on moving for a while. And a lot of people have brought it up. And I feel like I needed to cover it, needed to see it, needed to see where it was. I was actually curious to see the area of town these spots were in. So I'm glad I did it. I probably won't bring it up again. Not really something I want to dwell on. I don't think anyone should, but wanted to see it, so. You could tell someone this was a back lot and they would believe you. If I took a photo of this and, and just said, yeah, this is a movie back lot, most people would say, that is a movie back lot. People don't live there. And gotta go over to the far area of the community up here near World Drive to talk about one other spot that a couple of different events have happened over the years. One in 99 and one recently. This is where a World Drive connects with this retention pond right over here. Very, very close. Well, right across the street from the 7-Eleven and Mickey D's that have an Art Deco look as the sun is starting to set. Could not do a video like this without mentioning now years ago 10 years ago i took an inflatable canoe out here it went into this gator filled pond don't know if i would approach a subject matter like that these days with my mindset the way it is i don't know if i would get in a inflatable canoe and go around talking about the subject matter but I bring this up again, modern day, because something that happened here in 1999, there were three guys who rented a car, had a timeshare, most likely went to the Disney theme parks, which could be achieved commuting to right down World Drive over there. And this is way before this light system was put in. These lights are post 1999. But where World Drive connects here, this fence was not here. This concrete wall on the other side of the fence was not there. And the traffic light. So on more than one occasion, the most prominent being the three guys who late at night, they may or may not have been drinking. No, really, no way to tell. In fact, the only way the authorities were able to match up who they were was because of their dental records, because for almost a year, nine months, they were in the bottom of the lake, in their vehicle. After that happened, this wall was put up and this light was put up for good reason. And recently, very recently, it happened again, even with the lights here. It happened again. Right here in this lake. Now back in 1999, it really is amazing that it happened modern day with this wall here. But it did. And I looked up their names of the three guys, Scott Renquin, Dan Nelson, and Roger De Vergnes. They were missing for nine months, three quarters of a year, and then found here at the bottom of this pond. Very sad. And after looking it up, October of 2021, a 32-year-old woman, she fell to the same fate as well. 
late at night. It seems it really only happens late at night at 3 a.m. So very recently, six months ago? That's gonna do it for today. See you in the next video of the vlog.